Okay, uh, I'm a fencer, and uh, this here is my blade. And if you want to succeed with one of these, you need to be uh, faster and smarter than the opposition. This is also my blade. Uh, this is faster and more precise, smarter than the opposition. This is just me. This is a very handy point. So uh, this is what I do. Uh, I've been AutoCAD specialist uh, since 1985. These are some of the larger organisations I've done some work for. These are organisations I've also been for, and uh, just recently appeared on the Bixis uh, blog. Uh, anybody here read my blog? Yep, what you? Okay. Right. Okay, uh, that's a fairly well known uh, blog that gets under the skin of uh, Autodesk on a regular basis. And, uh, they have a lot of fun with that. Okay, so uh, I make my living uh, partly through uh, Lisp programming uh, for AutoCAD, because most of my customers still, use, still AutoCAD users, not to AutoCAD users. But for the past few months, I've been using VixCAD for my AutoCAD Lisp programming. So I've been developing for, for AutoCAD in VixCAD. <laughs> why? Well, before we get to that, first of all, why would you do it in Lisp anyway? As you've seen, there's, uh, there's many alternatives for developing uh, in CAD. Uh, here's some good reasons. Low to zero maintenance. Uh, I've, been, I've had code that's written in the 80s uh, that still works fine today. You have to do nothing whatsoever to do. It's compatible between releases of AutoCAD and also compatible between applications. So some code that was written in the mid 90s uh, will work fine for Gridscad version 14 or 18, AutoCAD at least 12, AutoCAD 29 and various of the other uh, AutoCAD uh, workalikes uh, that have also added their own, their own list. Some of them don't do quite such a good job <laughs> as uh, the uh, the big scan guys have. Uh, okay, it is powerful enough and fast enough for for 99% of, of what you want to do with uh, in AutoCAD or BigScan. There's no compiler required. You just you you've always been able to just use any old text editor to uh, produce this and. The uh, code is uh, compact and efficient uh, compared to uh, you know, .NET stuff. It can be very uh, lengthy. You can generally write uh, very uh, compact code. Uh, the, there is lots and lots of sample code and like is available in the in the CAD space, um, and it is a proven survivor. So if you want stuff that you know is going to continue to exist, continue to work then it's, uh, it's a pretty safe bet. Uh, just to give you an idea of the, uh, the history of, of this and how, how much of a survivor it is, uh, it dates back 60 years. Okay, it's the, uh, the second high level programming language ever developed, um, invented by a guy called John McCarthy. Uh, in terms of getting into uh, OCAD, uh, in the early 80s, there was a, a variant of Common Lisp developed, and a uh, public domain variant called XLisp, created by a guy called David Betts. And uh, John Walker from Autodesk uh, grabbed hold of this uh, public domain piece of software and incorporated it into AutoCAD. Uh, in AutoCAD 2.1, they introduced a thing called variables and expressions initially, which was pretty much auto lisp except you couldn't load any files. Uh, so people had to uh, close things up by putting them into, into menu macros, that sort of thing. 
a bit later on in the 2.1 uh, variants came along 2.18, which is when full auto this was uh, was introduced. So all of this dates to to 86. So that's uh, well over 30 years of um, of survival. Uh, Again, in 86, it was significantly enhanced again. The early order this, you couldn't get at the entities in the, in the drawing in 2.5. You could in various other ones. And it continued to, to progress. Stuff got added. Uh, a big change, a big uh, addition, came along in release 12 with the addition of DCL, Dialogue Control Language, which was just mentioned earlier, uh, which allows you to define dialogue boxes access to dialogue boxes. <clears throat> and in 1994, uh, there was this third party developers uh, basis software who produced this thing called Vital Disk, which was an integrated development environment. It provided access to the object model and active excerpt. So this uh, was an add-on to what I cared that was sold by this third party developer. They were purchased by Autodesk and uh, it was incorporated into initially an add-on to Autocad Release 14. Uh, and it was called Visual Lisp, renamed from, from Vital Lisp. And in March 1999, it was incorporated into the Autocad product itself. Uh, and Still called Visual Lisp. March 1999, we have the Visual Lisp IDE or VLIDE. And that picture there, that image there, is that taken in 1999 or is it taken yesterday with AutoCAD 2019? Either yes, no, uh, either action <laughs> answer is correct because it hasn't changed this century. It is uh, the same now as it was in 1999. So it's been a very useful tool. It was my primary tool for doing good list development for a very long time. Uh, you can have multiple windows in it. Uh, something very amusing you might notice is that some of these icons, the bits that are supposed to be black, they're actually grey. Uh, and this is a long-standing bug with the Visual Lisp IDE. You get a random colour. It could be puce, it could be turquoise, it could be anything you like. In this case, it was grey. Autodesk has known about this bug for a very, very long time. I've repeatedly reported it. <laughs> uh, they can't fix it because the developers of the VL IDE were shown the door a long time ago. Uh, and they've really been able to do nothing with it uh, this century. But still a very useful tool. You can, you've got your syntax highlighting, uh, you have your uh, symbols in a different color, that sort of stuff, uh, and you have the ability to debug with it. Okay, and that was that was it. Ninety nine. No, that was it for this development, basically. Now, Vixcad has had compatible uh, Lisp for uh, for many releases now. Uh, very compatible. <coughs> but what was missing from visual uh, from Vixcad's version of, of Lisp was that integrated development environment. So if I, as a, a CAD manager who was developing uh, in-house software, wanted to switch from AutoCAD to RitzCAD, I would have to maintain an AutoCAD license in order to be able to debug my code. And if there were any variance uh, between the AutoCAD and the RitzCAD code, and there was some problem that happened in RitzCAD but not in AutoCAD, I would have to get back to the old techniques of typing in print statements and stuff like that in my code. Very, very tedious. So, big news this year, 
February 2018, uh, an interim release of BricsCAD version 18.2 uh, brought out this BricsCAD LISP advanced development environment, uh, B-L-A-D-E, or Blade. <coughs> so this is the, the first major advance in, in CAD LISP uh, this century. It has a whole bunch of advantages. Can you read that at the back? <laughs> no, that's just that's a joke. Okay. Uh, those are actual real advantages. Uh, uh, I've been communicating with the, the guy called Thorsten. He's a German guy who works for, uh, for Bixis, uh, who has um, who has developed this and is responsible for the, the compatibility that we have with. BricsCAD and AutoCAD Lisp, uh, and uh, those that big list there was in fact uh, from an email that he sent to me, listing the advantages that uh, the Blade has over VL uh, They can be uh, narrowed down into a few different sections here. Uh, the, the interface, uh, the lots of advantages to the, uh, the interface. Uh, some of these will be familiar to people who've used other development environments. Uh, uh, very handy stuff here. Uh, I'll be going through with some of that if we, if we get the time. Uh, navigation, the ability to, to easily get to the bits of code that you want. Uh, advantages in, in debugging, you can do debugging things that you can't do in BLIDE. Uh, all sorts of uh, watches that you can uh, Stuff you can do with watches that you can't do with the LIDE. Uh, configurability, this is it out of the box. You can, in fact, configure it to look like the LIDE, uh, if you like, with the, the LIDE colors. Uh, these line numbers can go away if you don't want them. This line can go away. You can do all that sort of stuff, and you can uh, save that as a configuration file. So it's like in AutoCAD or BricsCAD, you can save a, a workspace. You can do the same kind of thing in this development environment. Uh, very, very uh, configurable. And big advantage that Autodesk, uh, that BricsCAD has over Autodesk, is that this is going to be an ongoing development. It's, it's not going to stay like this. The guy responsible for this is really keen to make it even better. Autodesk, not so much. Okay, so I'll just uh, point out a few uh, parts of the uh, the interface. We are a bit uh, short for time. Uh, <coughs> did I mention that um, this in BricsCAD runs about three times faster than AutoCAD? It, it's it's a, a much more modern engine under, under the skin. So although what you see here is more modern, also what's under the skin in, is, is more modern than the, uh, the Autodesk engine. Uh, I had, um, had one guy, uh, one of my users when I was a CAD manager, who had one polyline in his drawing, and it, it, his AutoCAD was running like a dog because this one polyline had tens of thousands of vertices in it. Uh, and he asked us anything he could do about it. Well, I happen to have a bit of this that, that weeds out the polyline. So he isolated the polyline, starts its weeding process to, to reduce the number of uh, vertices in the, uh, in the polyline. Uh, and the, the code was estimating it was going to take just under an hour for one polyline. Uh, so anyway, while he was doing that, um, he decided to go to lunch, he was going to have a long lunch while the one polyline was being processed. Uh, so I just went downstairs and uh, I thought, hmm, I wonder how BricsCAD's going to run this. And so I uh, grabbed the same, uh, the same file, so the same code, same DWG file, ran it 18 minutes. And that, that's, that's fairly typical, it's, it's just so much better. 
All right, so uh, in the interface here, we have this, uh, this pane over here uh, on the left. Uh, by default, it shows files. So I've got uh, multiple files over here. I've got various list files and DCL file. Uh, typically, it will just show, show you those. Uh, there's also a functions tab, which is uh, on at the moment uh, in this one. Uh, so it, it shows you a, a, a tree structure of the, uh, the, the files. The, uh, the list functions that are in the, the current open tab over here. I've tabbed browsing here, tabbed uh, documents. Uh, another feature. Uh, resources, that's an, another thing. Uh, it, it will show you uh, what all the commands have been added to it, that, that sort of thing. Down, down here we have uh, watches in general um, and this has been captured in the middle of a debugging session so I've got a breakpoint that I've, I've placed in here I've run the debugging session it's stopped at the breakpoint and this list here of the variables is automatically generated so in PLIDE you have to go and add to watch add to watch add to watch Okay, and if you, you're dealing with that and then you go into a different function and you want to put a different bunch of local variables, you need to do that again. This just, I didn't have to do anything. Okay, it's all here. We've got our variables, we've got our values, we've got the type. And we also have a breakpoint little tick box here. So what I can do here is, okay, maybe my breakpoint here isn't what I need. Maybe I want to have the code automatically stop whenever this change number changes. So I've got a change number variable here, it's currently 16. All I do is tick the little box there, tell it to run again. The code will keep running until this variable changes. Bang, there it is, it shows you again. It will show you what the variable state is at that point. <laughs> yeah, break points, score stat debug functions all sorts of stuff. This little toolbar thing here appears automatically when you enter a, a, a debug session. Uh, so you, you, you start your code and you can step into and step over and all, all that sort of stuff and stop it. <coughs> under, the, uh, under the preferences here, there's all sorts of stuff that you can configure. Very, very highly configurable um, piece of work. So to sum up, uh, Blade, it's uh, faster, it's smarter, it's more efficient, it's highly compatible. It's a, the Brix CAD Lisp is a superset of Auto Lisp or, or Visual Lisp in that there are more, more functions available to you in, uh, in Brix CAD than there are in AutoCAD. Uh, however, those extra functions are actually provided to you that you can hand over to people who are just running for or whatever. Okay. So that you can uh, safely use the extra functionality that's available for Brixcad, and even AutoCAD users can use it. Uh, this is the best tool for the job of developing for AutoCAD, not just for Brixcad. It's the best tool for the job. I'm using it, it's saving me money. I use this to succeed at my job. Thank you. Visual Lisp ID, that doesn't have a function tree view on that, does it? No. Yeah, like you can. Doesn't even have a drop down, does it? I think. No. There's Visual Lisp. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot that's in it. Yeah, there's no navigation. So if we compare that with the blade here, uh, as well as the line numbers, you can turn that off, of course. Uh, it's also uh, collapsible. It's collapsible. Uh, you can just double click on any of these, it just takes you straight to that piece of code. Uh, this is also sortable. So you, instead of uh, showing you the functions as they appear in the file, it will also show you them in alphabetical order. 
so that's very handy if, if you've got code that's uh, that's arranged in an mm. unconventional manner or with the community manner. Yeah. And also it shows you what the, the um, variables for each of the functions are. So when you're writing the code, you can... Yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 so it, yeah, it shows you what uh, what the parameters are for each function. Mm -hmm. uh, in here. So yeah, you get you get none of that in AutoCAD. It, it is just it has saved me so much time using this instead of using AutoCAD to to develop for AutoCAD. It's a great first effort. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you very much, Steve. That's terrific. Yeah.